Hello and welcome to the Sprint 57 review. Uh, Sprint just ended uh, two days ago on Monday. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as the usual, I'll give the update on the Sprint overall. Carol will give us an update on the community. Uh, Harpreet will give us an update on the classic UI. Uh, Chris K on the service UI. Greg Bloomquist on providers. Greg M on automate. Uh, on the platform this time, it'll be uh, Tim Wade instead of Greg T. Um, on the API, it'll be Alberto. And on the quality, it'll be Dave Johnson. Next slide, please. All right, so, um, <clears throat> so we've been uh, moving forward to the uh, fine release. And uh, yesterday, we made uh, branches on, the on 14 repositories. In that link there, you'll see what those are. Um, there's also new labels that were added. Uh, find yes, find no, find conflict, and find backported. Um, so please start using all find yes and find no for um, specifying which PRs need to be backported to the find release. And uh, finally, the beta build is uh, being worked on as we speak, and we will have an announcement about it in the next uh, few days. Next slide, please. <coughs> okay. Um, so, in the main repository, we had 180 pull requests merged. 61 were enhancements and 58 were bugs. And the rest were sprinkled around. Uh, I think the... Now that... The uh, enhancements will probably start diminishing a bit as we work on bugs um, to stabilize the fine release in the next uh, one or two sprints here. Next slide, please. Okay, by uh, category, um, 69 PRs were in the providers area, um, 28 were in the core, 17 in the UI, 24 were in the API, 13 in services, 9 in reporting, and 7 in automate. So oh, good mix. Next slide, please. Um, this, this, this is the chart that we've been putting together with Marianne, um, or actually that Marianne's been putting together. Um, so, uh, as you see, we keep growing the number of PRs that are merged. Uh, every sprint, we're having more and more. <clears throat> and now on the two-week sprints, I think we're well ahead of wherever we were with three-week sprints in 2016. Um, we're also growing the number of repositories. You see in sprint 52, we were at 103 repositories, and now we're at 108 repositories. So we continuously grow that. And I think as we add more repositories and things uh, start standing out on their own, I think that number will grow even more. Next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> so the total across all of the repositories uh, in the Manager Q organization is that we had 565 pull requests merged. <clears throat> As you can see there, the 180, that was the one that I spoke about initially. The classic UI had 117. Um, the integration tests run by the quality team uh, had 93. The service UI had 35. The Amazon provider had 33. Documentation had 30. Uh, Gems pending 11. Linux admin 9. Those two are kind of helper repositories um, used by the product. Uh, the VMware provider had 9. And content, which is automated content at this point, uh, had 8. Uh, there were also two new repositories created, uh, Amazon SSA support, as well as the Manager QUI scaffold, um, which we can discuss at a, at a later sprint. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so <clears throat> we have more uh, repository extractions planned uh, sometime in the month of April. Hopefully in the next sprint, but if not in the next uh, two sprints. Um, so those six that are there are 
the SQL schema um, that'll be extracted to in your repository. Um, those four providers that, that we have there, those should be extracted to new providers as well in new repositories, as well as the automate engine. There's been work underway, and hopefully we can get that across the finish line uh, in the coming sprints here. Next slide, please. All right, and over to Carol on the community. Hi, um, thanks, Oleg. Sure. So for um, the community side, uh, we have the, our regular last week in Manage IQ posts. And uh, to be honest, they are getting more and more interesting. Uh, you can read about uh, certain moves by uh, certain uh, Hungarian, American, and Czech <laughs> um, people in, in, in the Manage IQ team, and, uh, which is written by Libor. And, Dr. Drew, uh, how do you pronounce his last name? <laughs> Dr. Drew is, uh, has um, showed us some interesting um, solution. And I think after reading that post, I think I need a big dose of PRs as well. So for upcoming events, um, we have quite a few things going on. Actually, right now, there's the uh, KubeCon, our Cloud Native Con in Berlin. And Sergio is there representing us for Manage IQ. But uh, it's happening today and tomorrow. Next week, uh, we have two events, one in Warsaw. Uh, it's a event, uh, they call it a bar camp. It's, there's gonna be two topics, one on Manage IQ, which I will present, and another on Ansible. And um, in Brno on April 5th, they're having, we're having an open house, red open house. And um, we have a nice team presentation between uh, the Manage IQ team and the RDO uh, team. We're going to uh, demo uh, integration of uh, OpenStack and Manage IQ. Um, so looking forward to that. And then later on in the month, we have a meetup in Amsterdam. As I think three talks already confirmed, quite interesting about uh, Manage IQ uh, automation and using uh, Manage IQ with Ansible and Foreman, I think. And then at FOSS North, which is an event, uh, a FOSS event uh, in the Nordics, Northern Europe, in Sweden this time. So anybody who is in this area, please uh, feel free to join. And since we have you know, a lot of events happening and uh, it's great to see some recaps. So uh, we have a, a blog post written by Satya Ajit um, uh, to uh, re recapping the um, event from PyCon in Pune last month. And then uh, there's a video from uh, last week, actually two weeks ago uh, when I was in FAST Asia. If you're interested, if you, uh, please uh, check them out. Um, that's all from me. And um, next slide, please. Thanks. Hi, all. Um, so from the UI side, we had a total 113 UI PRs merged during the sprint. As you can see, I have some numbers for each of the categories that were merged. We have had a very busy sprint with the sprint being the last sprint to get features in for the release. So we have had a lot of Ansible and non-Ansible enhancements that were merged during the sprint. Um, I have some of the main ones listed on the slides here with some screenshots and a couple of the demos to share. So for the bug fixes, we had um, some fixes in the API error handling area. So the JS code was fixed to handle errors that were returned from API calls to make sure um, API errors were displayed correctly on the screen. And um, on the com compare screens, um, the toolbar buttons and uh, adding and removing of the sections on the compare screens and non-explorer style screens was uh, broken by some of the refactoring efforts that we are doing so those were fixed and um, also our back checks were added around the selected records for 
uh, performing tax, uh, tasks on them. So if the user does not have access to the selected records, we display a message on the screen. And um, also tagging was added to the container volume screen. Next, next slide, please. Um, in the technical debt and refactoring area, there was uh, more tests added around the, all of the middleware controllers. And there was some um, dead code deleted from the compare module. And um, also there were some leftover non-angular provider forms. So those were deleted as well. And um, also the filter substitution mix-in was moved from the core repo to the UI repo so that we can do for the refactoring on that code. And um, configuration controller and MIQ AE customization controllers were updated to use generic session mixins. There was some other cleanup task going on with the tree select method in the VM common controller. And also the cap and new performance charts related methods were broken into small methods for, uh, for the refactoring. Um, for as far as enhancements are concerned, we um, added retired services node in the services explorer, and um, also Ansible repositories CRUD was added by Zeta. She ha uh, she has a small demo on that that I'm going to share after after these slides. Also, Ansible credentials CRUD was added by Milan. I also have a demo for that. Um, there was a copy from provisioning button added to the Ansible catalog items form, so the data from provisioning tab can be copied over to the retirement tab to make uh, things easier for the user. Um, Ansible services uh, summary screen was updated. I have some screenshots uh, in, in the slides further. Um, there was a SSL support added to Hocular providers and uh, clear object storage container support was added on the cloud object store, store container screen. There was a support added to um, in the middleware on the middleware server screen to show the buttons for the mutable servers and uh, to show different buttons on for the unmutable servers. There were some filter options changed on the container provider screens. I have a screenshot for that. And um, dynamic support was uh, added for provisioning new cloud volumes. There was there were some further new fields added on the form. And uh, now you can add OpenStack Cinder as well as Amazon EBS cloud volumes. Next slide, please. Um, there's some further breakup of PRs that were merged by the area in the UI. So as you can see, services has most PRs merged as we have added a lot of new Ansible features in that in that area. And um, containers, middleware, and storage teams have contributed a lot of enhancements as well during the sprint. Next slide, please. So as you can see in this screenshot, we have uh, added active services and retired services nodes in the service explorers, services explorer. So um, previously you could see all services in under the all services node and it was difficult to tell which ones are retired and which ones aren't retired. So it's um, to make it easier. Next slide, please. So this one is, uh, catalog item form where we have added a copy from provisioning button. So as you can see, I have some uh, options selected on the provisioning tab. Next slide, please. And on the retirement tab, we have a copy from provisioning button. So once a user clicks that, there's a confirmation dialog that appears to make sure the user wants to go ahead and copy all the data from the provisioning tab to retirement tab because that overrides if you have selected something already on the retirement tab. Um, next slide, please. Uh, these are the changes made to the services summary screen. Uh, these are just for the Ansible services screen. So if you have a Ansible, if you're looking at the Ansible service details, you will now see the 
two or three tabs depending upon the data that you have. So on the details tab, you'll see some service details and the list of VMs if you have any. And then there's a provisioning tab that displays the data that you entered when you were provisioning the service. And if depending upon if you have a retirement job, it will display the third tab, retirement tab on the screen. Next slide, please. That's a middleware provider screen. So as you can see, there's a SSL support added under the security protocol. So depending on which option you select, the, you will see different options on the screen. Next slide, please. Here you can see the clear object storage container support that was added on the cloud object store con containers screen. You can uh, this uh, you can see the clear button from three different places. One is from the list view and the details screen of the cloud object store container, and also when you're looking at the list of uh, cloud object store container through the storage manager relationships. Next slide, please. So the support to only allow operations on mutable middleware servers was added. As you can see, there's a uh, different buttons for mutable versus un in immutable um, middleware server. So you can only see the cap and U data or you can apply tags on immutable servers, but you can perform other tasks for the mutable middleware servers. Next slide, please. So here's a screenshot with some new filters on the container providers ad hoc metrics screen. So you can apply filters. And view the results. Next slide, please. So that's a. Uh, um, New cloud volume screen where you can now add OpenStack Cinder and as well as Amazon EBS cloud volumes. And there was um, previously, I think there was just two or three fields on that form, but there's new fields added to that form now. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, I'll share my screen and run the demos. embedded Ansible provider. You can find them in automation Ansible repositories where all of them are displayed. You can add a new repository and only name and URL are obligatory fields. URL also enforces HTTP or HTTPS protocol. There are no other restrictions. Out of a repository has been initialized. You can see in success message. You can click on any repository to see its summary screen with all the information. And you can edit a repository. For now, a CM type is set to git and cannot be edited. Otherwise, any field can be edited as long as it's valid. SCM credentials can be set to any SCM credential that you have. You can change SCM update options as well. Edit of repository was successfully initialized. Now we can select any number of repositories that we no longer want and delete them. You will see if the delete was successful or not, as you may not have all the rights to delete a repository or another error can occur. This is a demo of new Angular form for adding and editing uh, Ansible credentials. 
So uh, after logging in, if you navigate to Ansible credentials, uh, you will be presented with a list of uh, av available credentials. From here, you can add a new credential. Uh, the new Angular form for adding and editing is impl implemented, implemented as an Angular component, and uh, all the form fields uh, are uh, rendered dynamically from data uh, that is retrieved uh, from API. We support several credential types, Amazon, Machine, SCN, and VMware. I'll show you addition of a machine credential. Naturally, you can also uh, delete an exi edit an existing uh, credential. as well as delete an existing credential. Um, that's all I have. I have. Next slide, please. Hey, thanks, Apreet. Um, so for the service UI, we have our typical overall um, sprint status. We finished about 27, 28 stories for the sprint, um, with a majority of them tested and accepted. Uh, we had a little, uh, we got a little too ambitious this sprint, and we had a couple that were left over. Uh, next slide. So some kind of behind the scenes features we've added. We've added um, our back to all the tabs except for the service details. We've temporarily removed the templates and dialog editor tabs. We've added the ability to restore snapshots to VMs. Um, <clears throat> we've added the behind the scenes framework for the reports uh, viewer. Um, we expect those to be done by the next sprint. Next slide, please. Um, one of the bigger things we've added this particular sprint is the ability to see retired resources in the service details page. So as you can see in the screenshot, um, it now clearly indicates that this is retired. You can still see information about it, but you won't be able to uh, make any actions on it. Next slide, please. And of course, um, you know, primarily we were focused on uh, bug fixes. So we've got about uh, 10 major bug fixes in there. Um, and I'm not going to go through all those, but you can see there's um, some pretty big ones in there. And I believe that's it for me. Next slide, please. Hi, hey everybody. Um, I'm going to talk about some updates from providers. Um, we have some updates from Hocular, uh, Amazon and Ansible, OpenStack and Rev, and some core updates. So next slide. All right, so first the graph of the breakdown um, showing uh, Amazon and Ansible with uh, tons of updates. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, because those, those numbers kind of fall all over the place in in, uh, in updates for you know across all the different features. Uh, next slide. On the Hocular side, uh, Harpreet showed us some of the SSL related updates to Hocular. Namely, a user can now select the security protocol, and this will drive the default port selection. Uh, also, the Hocular team restricted operations to just mutable servers. They also fixed some navigation issues and uh, they're now relying on the Hocular metric ID from inventory instead of trying to construct one on the fly. Next slide. From the Amazon side, uh, we're now mapping labels to tags and refresh. So last sprint, we talked about Brona collecting AWS tags as MIQ custom attributes. And this sprint, Dan updated the inventory refresh process to associate the those AWS tags to manage IQ tags. Uh, and this opens a new door for using AWS tags in manage IQ. 
Um, and now that this race to the fine finish line is over, I've asked uh, Dan and Rona to put together a demo for next sprint, kind of showing some of these features off. <clears throat> um, also, uh, in addition to some of the UI updates that Harpreet talked about, uh, AWS recently added a feature to dynamically update cloud volumes. And our friends over at XLab were quick to respond and implement it in Manager Q's AWS storage support that's coming out in the fine release. Um, on the Ansible side, so most of the Ansible provider level updates that you saw on that graph, um, those were actually fixing the fine features. Um, but the majority of that actual slice is going to be is going to show up in the automate and control section. We'll talk about later, or that Greg and we we'll talk about later. So next slide. All right. So a while back for OpenStack, um, so Lucy updated the event switchboard, allowing providers to specify a static list of blacklisted events, and now, now OpenStack is taking advantage of that. Um, and then on the rev side, they've updated to the new over SDK, and they're relying on that for um, inventory refresh as well. So next slide. All right, so um, a lot of the settings that kind of still existed in the core repo were uh, moved over to the separate provider repos that have been already extracted. Um, this is kind of one of those last points of trying to remove uh, provider specific pieces out of the core repo into, into providers. Um, and there were lots of graph refresh updates and most of these actually showed up in Amazon and that's why Amazon had such a huge slice. There were lots of like little fixes that came in from Ladislav and, uh, and Marcel there. All right, I think that's it from providers. So next slide. Thanks. Um, so from Automate, we had about 35 PRs merged, um, a lot more on the enhancement side as we're wrapping up this feature sprint. Um, good chunk on the bug fixing. I expect that to kind of reverse in this next sprint as we start to deal with bugs uh, being reported against the mostly the Ansible work. Um, and, but yeah, I spent a little bit of time making a transparent background and showed Marianne, so I was very proud of That's it. That's cool. Yeah. The sprint wasn't so busy that we couldn't get some extra stuff. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is a relatively, I think, big change that people see if for retirement of services. We used to, um, by default, delete the service at the end. Uh, we realized that wasn't really matching what we did with other resources. So this is aligns with the UI change that Harpreet showed, where we now have a retired node where those services will be moved to once they're retired. Um, and it really aligns with what we do for other resources in the system. You might want to go back and, and evaluate what was connected to that service or you know other life cycle information. So um, it made sense to keep those around. Of course, it's purely a automate change, so it's easily reverted. You, the change was made at the class level, but you could also override it, change the class or the, the individual retirement instances if you need or want that functionality back. So um, that change got in the sprint. Next slide. And then around the service models, a few things. Uh, Ansible tower events are in. Uh, so this is for the any external tower providers. Most of the events will trigger uh, refreshes against the provider to sync up the data. But, uh, Got a number of instances in there for all the different types that we're tracking in inventory. Uh, for cloud volume, a few new methods exposed there for attached volume and detached volume. And then this one's kind of been long-standing request is when we're adding disks through Automate. Previously, you could specify the, the data store and the size, but no other properties for that. So uh, we allow you to pass through a few additional flags now, thin provision, dependent, persistent, and a, if I recall right, and Adam will correct me if I'm wrong, it, it does somewhat depend on the data store if those flags can be actually honored all the time, but at least now you have the option to pass them. Next slide. Uh, a few more, yeah, so provisioning. We 
got a new customization template in for overt, which is a nice example for showing, passing the host name, root, password, IP, and stuff through. So that's a nice one. And then a fix I wanted to highlight um, around when we did the switchboard, events became asynchronous, and there were places where we were checking prevent policies, one of them being when you request a VM scan. So um, very nicely, we would just send the event into policy and then immediately continue on and start scanning. So now we've corrected that. So we're obviously uh, now honoring the prevent action in policy and canceling the scan. Next slide. And then, so most of the work for this sprint was around the Ansible integration. I don't want to go through this whole list, but um, we got events support on that side as well. Um, the retirement state machines, some associations that were missing. Um, did open up the, when you ask for standard out, you can get it back in different formats. So if you're parsing it naturally and say automation code, you might want it in JSON. Um, and then we'll show this a little bit more in the next few slides in the demo, but when we launch the playbook now, uh, we have a manage IQ kind of key that we're putting data into for each playbook so that you'll know the, the action that it's running for, you know, provision retirement. If it comes from control, you'll know the object that the event was raised for as well as the event that it was raised or that's raising it. Um, and then also information, API URL and token so you can talk back to the appliance and, and make changes in it, which is all you'll see in the demo that we have. And then I think over to Madhu to talk to a few more, talk about a few more of the enhancements. So uh, one of the key challenges we had was uh, passing information between uh, Manage IQ and Ansible. And uh, some of the objects that we have, like uh, providers, is actually called DXT Management System inside of our database. So we didn't want to teach Ansible to know what the mappings are. So we had to come up with this, a way of sending both the class and the ID information as a single value into Ansible. So that's where we started coming up with something called slugs, which are partial hrefs. And what they do is they actually combine the class name and the ID together. So whenever you need any piece of information from the REST API, you can actually pass in the, you know, the API and append the slug onto it, and you can actually just access that resource. So these uh, slugs can now be uh, used into extra bars that we are sending into Ansible. And in the future, we also envision that if somebody is trying to use dynamic dialogues and uh, the data is actually destined to be going into an Ansible playbook, you could actually use a slug instead of using the ID. So um, in order to support that, we had to actually add the href slug method into the service model. So from an automate method, when you're trying to build a list, you can actually access the href slug. So I think you'd see an example at the bottom. And the small picture there is courtesy of Greg. I think like he went looking for a slug yesterday. <laughs> That's what he found. Next slide, please. So these are some of the and extra bars that we are actually passing into Ansible. So you need all of this information to actually get back to the REST API to access our objects. So some of the, I think this is the entire list I think for now. We have the API URL, so which tells you, you know, which is the port number and which is the web server that's actually listening to request. Then there is also an ephemeral token authentication that you can use instead of using the user ID and password. <coughs> then there is a service, since in Ansible now, for everything from Manage IQ is service driven, <coughs> everything actually happens as a service. So we are sending that service information over, so you can fetch that object if you need. There is also the user that actually started that, and the key here is if you want to use any kind of ownership, RBAC, you can use the user object. There is also the action. The action actually tells you if it's provision, reconfigure, or retirement. And uh, this is typically needed if you actually have a single playbook that actually is capable of doing all three things, provision, reconfigure, and retirement, and you actually want to, you know, like, uh, caught an off certain task saying, you know, this, is, this applies only to provision, this applies only to reconfigure, and such. 
the last two are actually related to control, which actually tells you which is the uh, host or cluster that generated the event, and also what is the name of the event. Next slide, please. No, actually, you know what? I have a small demo. Next slide, right? Next slide. Yeah, okay. I'm going to share my screen and show you a small uh, uh, Okay, so this is actually uh, a small demo that actually integrates all the pieces that I showed in the couple of slides and create a, a new service item from Ansible playbook. We enter in the item, the description, we display it in the catalog, and you can actually pick a repository. Once you pick a repository, you can actually pick a playbook. So this playbook actually is like a cooked up, cooked up use case where we're trying to show how you can actually add a VM to a service based on a VM getting tagged or untagged. So once we add this service item, it takes a couple of minutes, but I think like uh, I'm just going to fast forward through the, the demo process. It actually quickly comes up and it shows you there is an item there. And now you go through the control, and I already have a policy defined in control, uh, the VM control policy, which actually allows you to, uh, you know, like uh, monitor the tagging and untagging of VMs and set an action for it. So I have a VM control policy, and it actually has uh, an action there called run playbook. When you edit that action, you can actually pick the item that we just created, the playbook. Once you select this, now this action is ready. So now at this point, we can actually go through the, the instances in the compute. Close that window. The compute actually have a bunch of instances which actually have the policy assigned to it. And if I go and untag or tag a particular VM, it's going to kick off a, a control action. So this is me setting the setting a tag for the VM. And at this point, we actually have created a queue entry waiting for one of the workers to pick it up. And once that's picked up, we'll actually see a small notification pop up that says that uh, the provisioning uh, has started. And I think that goes through the whole process of provisioning a service. And, uh, yeah, okay, so the request got approved. And it takes a while, but I think I'm just fast forwarding through the demo here. I think it says that the VM has been provisioned, the service has been provisioned. You look at the events and you can see the there was the starting and ending of the, the service provisioning. And if you go into services, and if you click on my services, this is what Harpreet was showing you earlier, is now you can actually see that the VM has been linked to the service. And there is also the provisioning standard output that comes right from Ansible. So this playbook actually has uh, all it's doing is trying to add a particular VM to a service, and I think like uh, I think Alberto is going to talk more about the API changes that were made for from the REST side for this. And this is the playbook that is actually used to add the VM to the service. Thanks, Manu. That's it. It's over to uh, Tim. Yep. On to the platform update. Okay. Hey everyone, uh, this is Tim Wade here. I'm um, just filling in for, for Greg Tanzillo, who's uh, currently away with um, a few other members of the platform team at uh, PGCOF. Uh, hopefully, they'll all have some good stuff for us when they come back. Um, so, Here's the uh, the vital statistics. Uh, I think it's a pretty uh, the uh, typical distribution. There's not much change from last sprint. I think 
Uh, we are slightly up on technical debt and refactoring. Uh, I think I have an idea why that is, but I'll, I'll come to that in a in, in a upcoming slide. So uh, let's have uh, the next slide, please. Okay. Uh, so first of all, there's uh, an enhancement to add uh, uh, logging um, when we get exceptions when trying to validate Apache configurations from uh, from Joe R. Um, secondly, we had uh, a whole a whole bunch of enhancements from uh, Nick on the ongoing uh, embedded Ansible project. Um, I'm not going to go through each one of these, but uh, probably the most tangible one is is that first one where we um, we we added a notification when the embedded Ansible server starts. Uh, if you go to the next slide, we can see what that looks like. Um, so here it is, uh, and th this is quite a uh, a well. This, this adds a lot of value to um, this story since uh, the uh, the server coming up can typically take uh, you know in the order of minutes. So um, so that's a nice enhancement from from Nick there. Um, next slide, please. Uh, okay, on to IPv6. Um, uh, in, the, uh, in the last uh, few weeks, uh, Shimon has been doing a, a lot of work on this uh, IPv6 project, and uh, a lot of the, the fruits of that uh, research has, uh, has dropped um, in the sprint. Uh, first of all, a um, couple of additions to the appliance console, um, adding uh, the IPv6. IPv6 uh, details to the summary screen and, and also adding a dialogue for, uh, for making those settings. Uh, and also a number of uh, related enhan enhancements to the Linux admin gem uh, in support of IPv6. And if we go to the next slide, we can see uh, a screenshot of uh, the, I think the dialogue screen for, for making those settings. Uh, so you can see the, the first part here. And in the next slide, uh, you'll see the confirmation screen. And as you can see, uh, we have a IPv6 address there. All looking good. So on to the next slide. Uh, OK, so. Uh, oh. Maybe we seem to have gone back one. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, a number of bug fixes. Um, I'm not going to talk about each one, but uh, the uh, the the first one uh, there, I think, was a uh, fix by Joe R, um, where we removed uh, rows from uh, the the, the mic queue uh, table that um, contained a class that was removed in Rails five, and, and this. Uh, uh, well, the uh, the reason that was removed, uh, I think, was because uh, um, these these are basically classes of types that were uh, better handled by Postgres. So um, I think Rails five had a, a considerable um, performance uh, gain from doing that. So um, um, so this uh, this fix basically removes any uh, re remaining references to those classes. Uh, onto the uh, onto the next slide. So uh, I mentioned when we were looking at the uh, the, the stats that uh, we had an increase in uh, technical debt and refactoring. Uh, I think this is we, well, we could attribute this to some ongoing work done by Yuri to um, to to clean up and consolidate the jobs model. Uh, and as you can see, there's a, been a lot of work done here in the sprint um, around that. So uh, well done to Yuri for that. Uh, on to the next slide. Okay, uh, I think that's it from me. Uh, on to uh, Alberto for, let's say, the uh, the remaining portion of the presentation. Alberto.
Alberta, we can't hear you. Anybody? There we go. You can hear us now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's strange. Yep. There we go. Okay, so on the API side, we had uh, quite a few enhancements coming in this print. Uh, first one here, um, exposing the new uh, authentication endpoint by Jillian. Um, so we have the first uh, support, the first post for uh, providing ability to create credentials. Uh, as you see for the uh, primary collection, the required uh, parameter being manager resource as we're adding credentials for a specific provider. Uh, but the alternate signature on the bottom where you target the authentication as a sub-collection in that payload, the managed resource is not required because it's uh, implied. Uh, next slide, please. So other than create, we have the usual uh, army of uh, uh, requests here. So we have the... Uh, the post action, the edit action, as well as the uh, related put and patch, um, as well as support for the bulk action edits. You want to edit multiple credentials uh, targeting the uh, primary collection. And for delete, the standard HTTP delete verb and the uh, delete action on post, and as well as support for bulk action uh, deletes. Uh, the other enhancement by Julian there was to enhance the options uh, verb for API authentication to return the different credential types and all the nitty-gritty detail needed for driving the UI for that. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, next round of uh, enhancement by Julian was the configuration script sources. Uh, if supporting the full CRUD, as you see here, the initial uh, create. Uh, followed by the similar signature as before for the uh, action edits, put, patch, bulk edits, as well as the delete signatures. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, we have uh, one enhancement from uh, Daniel uh, here. Uh, while we supported edits on alert definitions before, we didn't uh, uh, provide that as uh, for bulk edits at the collection level. And here's a... Uh, a sample example of uh, doing bulk edits uh, for alert definitions. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so this one, uh, Medu mentioned, so Jillian did this enhancement where we now support adding resources to services. Uh, we went through a couple of iterations on the signature, but uh, this is uh, what we landed with. So. It's uh, adding a resource, add resource action where you add a single resource to a service. And so you can target the one service or if you need to add multiple resources to the same service or to multiple services, you have the bulk, uh, the bulk action shown below uh, when targeting the, uh, the collection. So that kind of gives you the flexibility. And it's a standard uh, API action, so you get the action result for each. So you can see the in the bulk for success or failure on each. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so we have one enhancement by Aparna where we're now exposing cloud volumes. So you have the uh, collection API cloud volumes and providing the uh, query on the collection on the individual resource as well as bulk query that we support on the others. Uh, so when you post to cloud volumes, you can query multiple cloud volumes by uh, href or ID. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so another enhancement by Jillian. Uh, now we expose orchestration stacks uh, for services as a sub-collection. And here are the different signatures. So first one, just getting the sub-collection. Second one is getting the particular service with the orchestration stacks expanded. And the other one, fetching uh, all services or by filter, expanding them and the orchestration stacks. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so as mentioned uh, earlier, uh, so now that we have the HREF slug implemented in the model, 
Uh, again, it's a unique identifier for a resource and accessible uh, for all CIs uh, as a virtual attribute. And just like you would fetch any other virtual attribute, the example here, fetching AVM and requesting, for example, name vendor and the HRS slug. And as you can see, the HRS slug here in bold is, is the unique identifier. As you can see, that subset of the href is that signature. Next slide, please. Okay, so for fetching the, right, so we now expose the standard out attribute for orchestration stacks. Um, so that, again, is accessible via a virtual attribute, as you see in the first signature, attribute equal STD out. Uh, but we also support a, a optional parameter, which is called format attributes. That kind of gives us the flexibility to request um, additional formats per attribute. So we, we just implemented this for STD out. So here uh, you can come with that request and say format attributes, STD out equal text or JSON or whatever principle supports. So it kind of gives, uh, gives us the flexibility. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, and uh, yeah, one last enhancement for providers earlier, when uh, you did a refresh on a provider from the API side, it was pretty much a fire and forget. Uh, kind of makes it hard to track, you know, when is this thing done? So now we return the, uh, the task reference, the href and the ID with the, uh, with the action result. Um, the one caveat here for, you know, when targeting provider with multiple managers, we, you know, we return the first manager's uh, uh, refresh, there's an RFE to support a, sig a different signature for multiple uh, that's listed here uh, for the future. And I believe that's it for the API. Next slide, please. There he is. Hey, how's it going? This is Dave Johnson. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. All right, cool. So uh, yeah. the team has been the team has been staying pretty busy. Um, uh, you know, going through bug verification, a lot of fixes coming out of development, which are great to see. Um, in terms of the, the Ansible feature set, 80% uh, has uh, been implemented from our point of view. Um, the other 20% is for the most part de-scoped. We are trying to confirm that. Um, but uh, overall, you know, things are in good shape. Uh, there's still a few unknowns that we're, we're, we're going through and um, figuring out if, if some of these new uh, features that were delivered uh, 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 in yesterday's build um, are good to go or not. But uh, overall, things are, 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 are trending up. It's, 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 looking, it's looking good. Um, the incoming issue rate um, for the release is, is somewhat down. Um, I, uh, I'm a little bit hesitant to, to declare victory on that. I want to see how the, the next few weeks go. Uh, I, I guess specifically this next sprint. Um, uh, next slide. Okay, so uh, a lot of automation uh, fixes going in uh, as the application has been under, you know, development and, and just, you know, some of the changes have been breaking some of our tests and we're going through and, and fixing those. Uh, in addition, a lot of enhancements and refactoring going on. Next slide. Uh, uh, just a few uh Major changes that we we implemented were um, uh, refactoring some of the test parallel uh, parallelization code um, to prevent uh, uh, to to be better with deadlocks and, and use less CPU. Um, we run into into a few cases where occasionally the test runs would get hung for. Um, you know, whatever reason. So we put it some defensive code in place, hoping uh, to get that cleaned up. Uh, a couple widgetastic uh, fixes and conversions have went in. Uh, that uh, that overall refactoring effort is is in good shape. It's it continues to kind of drag on a little bit, but you know we're making progress as. You know, there's so many different things coming out of development that we need to to keep an eye on. So um, uh, we're definitely staying busy, and then. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of a lot of test fixes going in um, to fix the the existing automation to continue to work with the changes that have been going into the application. That's all I got. Next slide. 
So that was the Sprint 57 review. Sprint uh, 58 review will be back in two weeks, and that's on April 12th. Um, any questions or comments before we close this down? Chat room. Nope. Not the chat. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for all the hard work. Uh, really uh, a, a sprint with uh, a lot of uh, new features delivered. Um, so it's really kind of cool to see all that. And uh, looking forward to the next sprint. Thanks, everyone.